Training medics how to operate in conditions like these is resource intensive, time consuming and expensive. But they must get used to working in difficult places before they do it for real. There are no shortcuts. The solution could be found here at Birmingham University, where the Human Interface Technologies team is pioneering some advanced training techniques using the latest software, simulations and virtual reality. With the help of lifelike dummy Steve, the team have begun experimenting with what's known as mixed reality. Essentially how this works is we are tracking uh, using infrared cameras a uh, person's head as well as their hands using uh, points on their gloves uh, and, and a head tracker on a head mounted display and this allows us to align their real world actions with the virtual actions so as you can see them move the head and the hands and, and they will roughly align to the virtual world so we've both got a uh, virtual body here, but we've also got a real simulated body in the real world. So when they actually reach out and touch something, they do actually feel something, and they can kind of start to uh, sort of ascertain the problems. Down the line, the virtual world casualty could suffer from any wound and react to treatment in a realistic way. Professor Robert Stone heads up the Birmingham team, which works with the MOD and looks forward 20 years into the future. We're currently looking at the 2035 time frame, 2035, 2040. Uh, the big problem we have is that six months down the line, there will be a new piece of technology, be that a head mounted display or a glove or even smell technology, which will come out and we'll have to revise that. And we'll revise what we believe will be available that far ahead. So it's, 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 it's always a, a juggling act from, from every six month period forward. Using what's available today, the team are experimenting with mixed reality. And uh, when I finally put on the headset, I can now see the mixed reality table, which is being superimposed over this rather standard table. And the way the system works is it's, it's very much like a, a map and uh, it enables you to interact with that in a quite intuitive way. So you can um, just sort of pinch to zoom with your hands uh, to move in and out. You can also use your hand at the edge of the table, which rotates the map around. And you can also, of course, move in with your head itself because everything's fully tracked. So as you step around the table, it, it uh, follows you. The user can bring up documents and even mark routes and zones on the virtual world. Ultimately, I, I think we'd, we'd hope that those big maps that are, that are pinned to the walls of command centers will, will be a thing of the past, really we'll be able to just store it all virtually and ideally the headsets will get a lot smaller. It'll almost be just like wearing a, a pair of glasses and you'll have access to this almost unlimited amount of data. As the technology develops and we can create much more believable environments and we can, we can start sort of stimulating the senses, all the senses that we were born with, including things like smell, then we're going to be able to have much more effective, much more believable training environments than we've ever had before. It's not just virtual reality, the team are also experimenting with drones to generate 3D video. This is the replica Afghan village at Thetford, which will be familiar to the thousands of troops who did their training here before deploying to Helmand. That campaign might be well in the past, but today the village is helping to develop the technology of the future. And this is it. It's an off-the-shelf drone which might not look like much, but combine it with some advanced software and you've got a powerful surveillance tool in your hands. Chris is programming the, uh, the drone to adopt a scanning pattern on the second part of the Afghan village. We've scanned the first part uh, and now what he's doing is he's setting all the GPS coordinates so that the drone can take off, adopt the starting position and then do a kind of zigzag or raster scan. Uh, and then in doing that, we'll be able to take sort of snapshots. Every time the drone takes a new snapshot, it adds a GPS tag using its altitude and position. Using that data and some clever software, the team produce a 3D model of the area they've just scanned with the drone. The model is accurate to within a centimetre. So what we're trying to do is use the drone to be able to build up 3D areas uh, and demonstrate this idea of a, of a sacrificial drone in the future, bringing something down, scanning an area at very high speed with limited battery and possibly small arms fire, and then using that to build 
build more accurate 3D representations of what's actually there. It's technology that could one day be useful in combat. Eventually, in real time, if it's flying over, for example, to try and find out where people are, um, whether there's disturbed areas on the ground, and um, give the troops a, a more situational awareness of where they are on the ground. The more remote our armed forces get from the, from the action, from the surveillance, from the intelligence gathering, the more or the higher quality of information they're going to demand before they can meet, make you know, quite significant decisions on, on what they're going to take out and what they're going to observe in more, data, in more detail. For the time being, this technology is in the early stages and this is just an experiment. It takes hours to generate the 3D model today, but the troops of the future could see it in real time. It's technology that's inspired by the movies, the gaming world and science fiction. And one day it could have uses on the battlefield. Charlotte Cross, Forces News, Birmingham.